So, Coach, uh, you were talking about lifting. What what are the lifts you would be doing right now for these guys? You mentioned how the RTC guys are, are, are have to have the wrestling portion, and also have to lift on a regular basis. What are you? What's your lifting priorities? Well, I mean, that question always it, it always depends on what your weight class is and what, what you're trying to do, right? And some guys that you can't just answer that um, broadly because some guys are, they're not cutting weight at all and they, they want to put an extra 15 pounds on, right? They're growing and they're, they're on a different, I would say, lifting program than somebody that like, um, you know, like a Dave McFadden, you know, he's going to have to start getting down to 74 kilos, 163, and he weighs over 180. So he's not going to be on the, you know, bulk up, get big programs. So there's going to be different types of, of strength training he's going to do compared to the other guys. You don't have any so it's tough right? to like, you know, just objectively answer that broadly for like any wrestler. Right. Well, so you don't have any core exercises that you do, no matter who it is, from high school and up through uh, international level. There's, there's got to be four or five things that you do, no matter what. There's no regard. You might vary. Yeah, I mean, the, you might vary the weight and the reps and sets, right? But uh, you're going to make sure you get this stuff in. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I would. I would say that type of stuff. Um, I mean, almost all my guys are on, on their strength training program and they kind of lift in different times and I'm not part of all their strength training workouts, but as a coach, all the things that I do, you know, in practice, I mean, for example, these are little things, but at the end of stance in motion after one minute, like I'm having guys like level change and touch the mat and do like 10 froggies, um, high and as, as explosive as they can at the end of every stance in motion. So for example, yesterday we did, we wrestled, um, three matches and the last one we kind of all went at the same time. And then right when they got done, I immediately put them into three one minute stance motions. At the end of those one minute stance motions, I had them do 10 just explosive, you know, what I call froggies. It's where you just let all your weight drop down. You touch, you know, touch the mat and explode up as high, you know, as you can. Mm -hmm. The challenge with that is a lot of guys, they, they want to bend over and touch the mat and not bend their legs. <laughs> The whole reason to do that is to get them to bend their legs and drop their butt as low as they can because it's really like a penetration step. What you're really trying to do is like level change and penetrate, level change and penetrate. But it's tempting for guys that may be a little bigger. Um, they, they just want to kind of bend over, touch, hop, right? But that's – and you have to make sure you correct them in the middle of that. Don't enable them to do it yeah. you know, poorly. So, you know, those, those type of things, I think um, – some, some fun kind of strength training cardio that I do coach at, at the end of some practices when I'm really going to put them through some cardio is that, and I end up kind of doing this with my wife from our beach body workouts that we do. I just kind of learned some different creative, you know, workouts, but um, you, you have, you have three chunks of work. So you pick two exercises and you do, you do that for one minute, you do one of them for one minute, you do the other one for 45 seconds. Mm. Like a, and you do that three rounds, you do that three rounds through. And I'll give you some of those exercises, but the cool thing is you can, you can come up with your own, you can insert different exercises into this, but you do one minute and 45 seconds, three times through. And then you go, the next second round is 45 seconds and 30 seconds, and you do three times through. And then the last one, you do 30 seconds and 15 seconds, and you do three times through, right? But you don't change the exercises, they say. So, well, no, the, the, the first group of exercises is totally different than the second group, which is different than the third group, okay. right? Nine different exercises. And you do some mix of, um, you do some mix of clearly stuff that's going to hit your legs, stuff that's going to hit your foot speed, stuff that's going to hit your chest. So typically for that one minute, I'll do like um, kind of like a soccer run where you're bringing your feet. It's like you're, you're trying to dribble the soccer ball, yep. but your knees are coming as high as you can. So for one minute, and that kind of starts to get you breathing hard. Because if you do that for one minute pretty hard, um, you know, that can be for sure challenging. And then after that, I'll go into um, – um, I'll get in push-up position like a plank. And then for the 45 seconds, I'll just bring knees to my knees to chest. And I'll stay in that, that solid plank and just bring knees towards my chest. So, you know, like a mountain climbers, you're alternating your legs. Well, this is just bringing both knees up. Which is tough because you end up having to – you have to hold that plank for the whole 45 seconds and, you know, you're bringing your legs up. So, again, you would do soccer runs for one minute and you would do um, push-up knees to chest for 45 seconds and you do that three, three times through. Minute 45, minute 45, minute 45. You know, maybe take a good minute break or so there, a little longer if you want. And then you pick another two um, um, exercises. 
So the next one I do, I would say, is it's been good for wrestling, is I'll do like a, like a sumo squat. So you spread your legs out and you turn your feet out at 45. Uh-huh. And then you'll just end up for 45 seconds, you'll just stay low and you'll just kind of bounce for 45 seconds the whole entire time, which your legs end up burning uh-huh. big time. So you do that for 45 seconds. And then you'll go down what I call plyo push-ups. So you'll go wide, explode up, and then you'll go, you know, um, like close grip, explode up. Apply metrics wide, explode up, close grip, explode up, wide. And you stay in that push-up position the whole time. And that's for – that'll be for 30 seconds, right? Excuse me, 45 seconds of sumo, um, kind of sumo um, jumps right there. And you don't jump up high in the sumos. You just keep your legs burning the whole entire time. I know what you mean. And then – so you do that for three rounds, right? 45, 30, 45, 30, 45, 30. And then the last one I'll do is for 30 seconds on and 15 seconds off. And the 30 seconds, you'll, um, you'll, the first 15 seconds of it, you'll, you'll do like, you'll step back, reverse lunge, and you'll jump as high as you can, throw your arms there. So you have 15 seconds with your right leg, 15 seconds with your right leg, and you, then 15 seconds later, you switch to your left leg. So they're like, they're like kind of reverse lunge um, jumps. Uh-huh. And so that's 30 seconds, right? 15 with your right, 15 with your left. And then that last 15 seconds, I kind of get in my stance. Right. And then and you and you jump over towards like nine o'clock, jump over to twelve, jump over to three, jump to twelve, jump to nine. Staggered stance or square stance? Um you can be uh, you can be square because you're just jumping to both sides, right? That reminds you, me of uh, one of the drills Bruce Barnett used to have you guys do back in two thousand. Yeah. Well you do like so like for those fifty second jumps, right? Like, you, you know, you'll step back like this and your knee, you know, your knee doesn't have to touch the mat, but you'll jump as high as you can, right? Land, jump, mm-hmm. right? 15 seconds to your right leg and then you'll step back 15 seconds with your left leg. And then when you go those 15 seconds, you'll just end up going, ah, right here. 3, 12, 9, 12, 3. And you just do this, right, for 15 seconds. And you do that 30, 15, right? 30, 15, 30, 15. And... You put those guys through that, <laughs> their uh, their legs, their legs and chest will be burning. That last set of those stances is is how long? Fifteen seconds or another? Fifteen seconds. What, what'd you say? The last set of the stance stuff where you hop from. Yeah, back fifteen back. seconds. Yeah. Fifteen seconds. Okay. So your time is for the first rounds minute forty five, right. second rounds forty five thirty, yep. third rounds thirty fifteen. Three rounds. But that thirty right is fifteen on your right leg, fifteen on your left leg. Got it. That's good stuff. I like that a lot. So that's um, that's really good for your legs. I mean, that's really good for gaining stance strength, mm-hmm. and that's all great for wrestling. I mean, it gets again, it's awesome to be able to squat five hundred pounds um, once. Right. But as we know in wrestling, you need to be able to stay in your stance right for the whole entire match. So I think there's a, it's really the balance of both. I think there is for sure a place for for heavy strength training to really increase your strength, right? But then there's also a place to make sure that you, know, you can stay in a stance for six minutes, right? And not come out of it. So that stuff, I've been doing that stuff mm-hmm. lately. I think that's been good. Our guys, every time I put them through that, like, oh man, they because they know it's, you get the point towards the end where it's just like. <laughs> yeah, but it makes it a lot easier for them to stay in their stance for six minutes after you go through. Yes, yeah. Um, I was and the cool thing about that, you don't need dumbbells. Right. You don't, you don't need to be in a weight room to do that. You do that with a PE class. Yeah. And I, I gave you six exercises, but the cool thing is, is that you, could, you can insert. Yeah. You know, you can insert whatever you want in there. Right. I watched the, uh, the Satyev match again recently, yesterday. Uh, and uh, something that I've been thinking about, I'm reading the sports gene. Have you, have you read that book? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. And. So, you know, these guys are pretty big, and Cade's 6'1", and uh, it, it is generally his, – his center of gravity is higher, you know, and it's generally harder for him to stay in a, a lower stance than it is for me, yep. you know, Angelo, or for yourself. Um, and then I'm watching Satyev have – are you making fun of me? You're making fun of me. <laughs> uh, I'm watching Satyev, you know, and how high his stance is in his whole career. Now, you, you were able to – to beat him with, with double legs and getting to his legs because he is part of, partly because he's so high in his stance, right. but he also developed a, a style that made it hard for almost anybody else to beat him in that situation. Right. So my question is, 
uh, is it all right to be high in your stance like that? Do you, is that ever okay? Is that, is there a, uh, uh, why is he having so much success with it versus, uh, versus everybody else? And it seems like a lot of them wrestle like that, you know, with, even with the straight leg, even like uh, uh, Vladimir, uh, Clint Javili, you know, he's got the straight leg stance. And, and uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I would say if, if, if you're going to go down that path, then you, you better have amazing defense. I mean, that was the thing about Satiev is that probably 95% of the time that you shot a single leg on him. He scored on you. Um, he scored on you. Yeah. So I think that he could get away with that because he was so, like, you know, fluid and loosey-goosey. And when a guy got on a single leg, he would actually, get, instead of getting weight back into him, mm -hmm. using the skill that we typically learn, you and I learned growing up, right, face, stuff their head. Right, get your hips and stuff their head, weight into them. Like he did the total opposite, right? You shot on him, he did the exact opposite, right? He went away. Mm -hmm. He went away, like almost did the splits. He put you in bad position because he was going away from you. So if you held on to the leg, you'd be right here and you'd go, wham, because he's going away from you, taking that kind of split type step. Yep. And he would swing that leg all the way around and kind of get in that cross up position and wrestle there. So, um, he could get away with that Brahman because his defense was so good. I mean, the challenge is if somebody wants to start just, oh, I'm going to start wrestling tall, but they, they don't have a good defensive strategy. I mean, they probably will get blown off their feet. Well, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying just, just I guess, an acceptance. I'm battling the, the knees bent thing because I know how right. important it is. But then there, at some point there's just an acceptance of, hey, he's that much taller. Maybe he can get away with some of that. And, and uh, you know, those guys do end up stretching people out because you can't get to the end of them a lot. So I don't know, I guess. It's, it's, well, but I, I would also, I think it's, um, it makes wrestling practice more fun. I, I think there's times in certain practices where, you know, you spar and you're not staying in a perfect stance the whole time, right? I mean, you're just, I mean, you can kind of walk into a guy. And, and, and when you spar, you know, you take your pride out of it. So in some ways you can invite a guy to shoot in on you. Right. Like you're letting him get to a single, like you're letting him get to a high crotch. And I guarantee that that's how Satya became great at that. Mm -hmm. is that he spent so much time play wrestling, allowing guys to get to his leg. Yeah. Right? They get to his leg and he'd wrestle from there. He, they get to his leg and he'd wrestle from there. So I think, I think there's a time and place to spar and, you know, a guy gets on your leg and, and, and helps your defense, you know, too. But, okay. but I think in, in general for teaching most wrestlers, um, I, and generally speaking, I wouldn't teach them to have straight legs and right. just no. bend their back over. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't teach them. I'm not talking about teaching it. I'm just, I guess I'm talking about accepting uh, – accept acceptable accepting it about the wrestler and then how much do you accept versus just continuing to hammer get your knees bent get your knees bent get your knees bent i think you can accept it again if they're if they're really really committed to having um exceptional defense there right okay i mean if they're they're not scared if a guy gets their leg you know they're actually like now that's when the wrestling starts right so i think you accept it that's like one of those outlying situations like hey this kid's really good i mean guy like seth gross for example right um He's a great example. He stands pretty tall. Uh -huh. And most of the time when people shoot on him, he never sprawls. Right. I mean, he just wrestles when guys get to his leg. So, but, but again, not, his coaches would accept that in him because he's so, he's become so great there. Well, he's so talking you, about people not sprawling anymore and how at the highest level you just, you know, you, they don't sprawl. You don't sprawl at the highest level almost. And so speaking of that, like a reason I like your coaching is because I agree with what you say, like the way you wrestle, the way you break down wrestling, the way you stance in motion, the way you shoot double legs. That's the way I see wrestling as well. But now you see all these, the, the changing of the lead leg. And like, I look at, at like a Roman Bravo Young or even like a, a Bo Nickel. And, uh, uh, and I know that you had some time with Bo Nickel before too, right? I know he's a tech yeah. guy, but you know, the, the whole um, like, like I'm here and as you shoot, you're here and they're attacking, you're swinging that leg back and you're already hit. Or, or going here to pull to like an ankle pick, yeah. right? Where you're changing your feet. What are your thoughts on that? Cause you and I, I think are, are more like one leg lead, fake, 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 take your shot, right? Like, yeah, yes, no. No, I, I would say I'm, I'm totally for that. Uh, and I would say that the reason they do that, that's part of, I would say the Penn State's culture. So you, you got to say, like, well, who's, who's the head coach of Penn State? Who's kind of setting the technique? And if, right. you, if you understand with Kale, Kale's right-handed. I Kale, just haven't picked two Penn State guys, but I see it also with international guys too. Yeah. Right? No, but, but, but just let me, let me finish this. Yeah, yeah, Kale's yeah. right-handed. He leads his right leg to start out with. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, 
But when you when he goes to attack, if you watch him attack, he'll pull with his right hand, but he penetrates. He penetrates with his left, and he right. shoots with his left hand. But he starts a right leg lead. And he's right handed. Right. So it was very important to him to learn how to attack with his left hand and his right hand. And his main shots were he's right handed, right leg lead. But his main shots were a pick with his left hand and a knee pull with his left hand. Right. Those are his two two favorite shots. So he was shooting with his hand that you know, he's right handed, but he's shooting with his left hand. So that I think is. Um, you know, that's kind of a trickle down, and that's clearly being taught to those guys there. Bo Nickel, that was being taught to him. David Taylor, that's being taught to him. I mean, Mark Hall, I clearly know Mark Hall is a right leg lead. He would shoot high crotch with his right hand, but he's learning how to he's learning how to shoot with his left hand. He's learning how to shoot ankle picks. He's learning how to shoot single legs. He's learning how to shoot knee pulls with his left hand. So I think the evolution of wrestling, um, I think that that's a healthy thing to do. I think that makes you even better. Right. If you can attack to both sides and attack to attack with both hands, mm-hmm. I, I I see that as a as a good thing. Yeah, I go I go yeah that's that's great in theory too. But I for myself and I think you probably feel the same way in in your most important matches. You're probably staying in your one leg lead stance and you're staying in your A position. I did. Yeah. No, I did. But but nobody I would say nobody when I was fourteen, fifteen, sixteen teaching you that nobody started opening my mind up to that right so I never I never even thought about it so I just keep I kept doing my thing in high school I got to college that was never taught to me yep and it wasn't until I started coaching I started realizing I I can't turn everybody into me right that would be a poor coach I'm sitting there going hey let's just do snap post double legs and cut wrench everybody I mean I had to learn how to coach guys that did a bunch of different things and so part of the reason why I think I didn't necessarily add that stuff to my repertoire is because it wasn't really talk to me yeah that wasn't the way then I I totally agree and I I feel the same way just like uh leg passing you know if you watch a lot of your film man there was leg pass all over the place there but that wasn't part of the curriculum but one thing I did do like I if you watch um my match against Satia if you said you watched it my very first double leg it was definitely a knee pound right leg lead double leg Mm -hmm. Um, but my double leg in overtime I actually I stepped with my left leg and I attacked with my left hand first Mm-hmm. in overtime because his, his, his under kind of came out and I end up just I end up stepping with my left leg and attack with my left hand my head still hit on the same side it would for my righty double leg mm-hmm. <laughs> still hit on that same side yeah right? but I stepped with my left foot and I attacked with my left hand to finish Almost which is like made, misdirection sort of yeah made a little quicker so I did have the ability to do that um, and I would work on, I would circle right, circle right, circle right, and then I'd come over and, and penetrate with my left foot and hit single leg sometimes to righties, uh-huh. got their right leg leads, circling right, circling right, circling right, step on my right foot, load, explode. Uh-huh. So I would penetrate with my left foot, and I would get a single leg. But I would say that for the most, most part, I would agree with you, I was leading my right leg, I was penetrating with my right foot, but, but I had the ability to go the other side if I needed to. Mm -hmm. so i'm I'm open-minded to that right right well i i I trip on the first takedown of that match and how hard you had to fight oh Oh my god and then how he kept your wrist and then use a little foot because you had to fight not even go to your back yeah i had to i had to like concede the reversal or i would have gone to my back yeah yeah which that's that's another cool technique too like if you're working on if some guys like if you're about to get gut wrenched and you know you're about to get gut wrenched like you just didn't d it up well enough or some guy's got a monster gut and you're like, I'm going. If you catch that wrist, that, that, um, that's a fun technique to play around with. Yes. Yes. And then you go back and look yeah. at that again. Um, so what are your favorite setups right now? Um, probably right now, um, we've been spending a, a lot of fun time actually, uh, attacking when people have underhooks on us or two on ones on us. Right. So if somebody has an underhook on me or two on one on me working on pressure, the whole pressure release, like a pressure relief off a sidestep single, right? If I have your inside time wrist, I'm pressuring you, pressuring you, pressuring you right when you push back into me, I'm going to sidestep load, right. And explode to my single leg, just that pressure and release off a sidestep and a sidestep works because, um, again, when the pressure comes, it's almost like a Heisman, right? It's almost like you're just getting out of the way so the guy can fall over you, you know, step over you, which you can penetrate. So we've been playing around with a lot. Like if you have an underhook on me, I push back into you, 
And when you push back into me, I sidestep and I rip my arm down and I end up landing in a double leg. Wow. Two on one me, I sidestep, I pull my arm down, I end up landing in a double leg. Again, this is from a right-handed perspective, right? Yeah. From a left, from, from, um, if he has my left arm, again, as a right-handed guy, yeah. a right leg lead guy, if yeah. he has my left hand, I'm a pressure, I'm a sidestep to the left, same sidestep, I'm a pull, but then that brings the single leg to me. Your right-handed single leg. Yeah. Brings my right-handed single leg to me, right. And so on the left side, on the left side, you're looking for what? If he grabs your your right arm, you're looking for. If he grabs my right arm, it's double legs. If he grabs my left arm, it's single legs. Because I'm a basic righty single leg guy, righty so double leg. You're guy. pulling your arm out of it on the double leg side, and then going with that same hand. No, if you're um, if if you're if are you or do you lead your right leg? I'm a lefty. Okay, I'm a lefty. but I'm uh, so I'm trying to see it opposite. So for you, uh, for you, if you're a lefty. And he had he had your left arm. Yeah. You would step to the right, rip your left arm down as hard as you could, and you'd go double leg. I I pull it down and that arm would reattach. Yep. Right? Yep. That's what I was yep. trying to that's what I was yep. trying to get. Right. So if you're if you're a lefty, if he's yeah. controlling your arm underhook or two on one, yeah. you're gonna step to the right, pull your arm down and land double leg. You're getting your arm out of that position though. You, but you your rip your arm down as hard as you can. And the reason why that works is when you pull your arm down, it pull, pulls all his weight over the top of you. Right. So you almost like a carry motion, like an outside yeah. uh, your arm far leg motion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Um, click on that share screen yeah. part. So, you, so I can share my screen with you. Let me see. I'm going to go to... Did you Nate, allow me to do that? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I can share my screen. Okay. I'm going to go to our website, which is PennsylvaniaRTC.org. And if you click on um, this, it's called media right here mm -hmm. to the right. It has about 150 technique videos on there that wow. are just free. It has Kyle Snyder and Jordan Burroughs. There's a lot of stuff on there. What's that, uh, but, what's that website again? It's just our website, PennsylvaniaRTC.org. Um, let me see this uh, side step, and it populates. Can you see my screen? Yep. So when I when I push side, like anything that that mm. has to do with side step, pops in. Let me see. I see it. I read top left. Okay, attacking underhook. Yeah, like if I put right there, like I put side step. Right, anything that has to do with side step comes up. So this is attacking from underhook and two on one. Okay, let's see. I think it's important to go back and watch one of our videos on the side step single that we've made so you can understand the footwork. All these are only like, the side, like a minute and a half. Your leg will be penetrating. I think that will be helpful to put those two together. But I'm explaining to you again anyway, is the way that. Yeah, so again, I'm a righty. You're just going to be opposite. When he has an underhook on me or a two on one on me. I'm a side step, create space, and I'm going to look to penetrate. So, for example, not just clearing underhooks and throwing much, using them to attack. So, rich underhooks, for example, my right arm right here, right? I'm Watch out. Pressure, pressure, I'm pressure. Side step pressure. To the opposite side. And right when he pushes back right in, you see, I'll rip right that arm right down, right and you land around a double leg. Right, so you're going to clear it all the way. So, I'm going to turn the volume off so you and I can talk. Yeah. But see right there, there's this, there's gotta be this press release where there, I, I push back into him a little bit, right? And I'll push back into him, Rich is pushing on me, but when I sidestep, notice how his body, see how his body falls over the top of me? Right. And then I rip this arm down and then I can drive through on this double leg right there, okay? Daddy, can I have this? No, that's daddy's. I want, I want Maya. <laughs> I want so this is, um, this is my left arm, so this is the opposite side. Yeah. Right? So I'm still sidestepping to the left. Now watch when I pull. See how that brings that leg to me? Yep. Now I can hit my single leg. So for you being a lefty, Brahman, if, if he was um, two on one in your right arm, mm -hmm. you're going to sidestep to the right, pull, and it's going to bring it's going to bring that single leg to you. Your left hand attacking. Yeah. Single leg. This I, I can see it both ways, Coach. My question would be: He's got his head down and his hips back. Is it different? It's got to be different if he's got his head up and hips in. 
Yeah, I mean, if he's, if he's wrestling in more like a, a Greco position, it would be a different type of move, a little uh -huh. bit different. Uh -huh. But most of these guys that get underhooks in freestyle, you know, they'll, they'll take your yeah, arm. They underhook like a freestyle guy, yeah. You're... But the thing, the, you're seeing the, the, the – this is, I'm just showing the footwork here, not the pressure so much. But what's really important is you have to engage him with pressure. Like, again, he has an underhook on me. I'm pushing back into him. And when he pushes back into me, wham, that's when I, I'll hit it and he'll come over the top of me. So, again, this is my single leg. I'm sidestepping. I'm going to rip that left arm. See, when you pull your arm down, like, towards your butt cheek, yep. if the guy's really hanging on to your arm, then you, you're just going to pull him right into your single leg. Mm -hmm. Love it. Thank you, so. so, that's um, – that's one thing that we've been doing. Um, let me think. Because I'm using this video as helpful, I think, for me explaining it to you. I think this is an important thing, too, just hand fighting and clear ties. Our big thing, if you ask me what we've been doing lately, is instead of, like, um, um, totally clearing, you know, the tie, is I want to change the tie and get to my offense, which is why I probably should, like, relabel this. This will load. So you work at Drexel too, then? That's part of the RTC. You do both. So Drexel and, and and Penn are two Division One schools, right? And so we use Drexel is one block away from Penn. Okay. So you literally have two Division One wrestling programs a block away from each other, and we, and we use both rooms. So typically, we go over to Drexel on Thursday mornings and train. <laughs> I can talk this to you like I, when people think hand fighting right it's like you're thinking you have to throw punches at somebody but hand fighting is really changing the tie and getting your hands to where you want them to get to your offense so what happens a really common tie right is, is a collar tie mm -hmm. so if rich collar ties me right here right so say he's got a pretty tight collar tie it's tempting to want to just not move my feet and try to dig back inside like this. But if you dig back inside, if a guy level changes, he's going to get right on your leg. This is the whole, like, move your hands and move your feet, which I'm kind of explaining right here. I'm just going to turn the volume off, and I'll talk you through it myself. But, like, right now, he's got this, this collar tie on me. <clears throat> and watch how I'm going to punch. I'm going to punch his shoulder, and that creates the space. So I punch the shoulder, create the space, and then I want to circle. i got to move my feet to that punch. Circle my feet to that punch. And as I move my feet, I move my feet, I move my feet. Then I can get my left hand back inside. Yep. And so for me, that brings, it brings my high crotch to me. As a righty, it would bring my high crotch to me. There's the high crotch, wham, right there. Mm -hmm. See that? For you... If a guy has a left collar tie, right? If you left collar tie, if you punch with your left hand, Brahman, circle to the left and weave your right hand back inside, it would bring it would bring your high cross to you. Now I'm showing this, I'm showing the single leg side. This guy's got a lefty collar tie on me. I'm gonna punch, weave my hand back inside, circle, 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 and then there's the single leg. Guys will have tight. I'm just showing how it's in the similar way that you would you would change the underhook. You got to get create space, bicep to the ear, palm to the ceiling, circle, 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 circle to get my arm out. The same way I would. This is it's very similar to how I clear an underhook, punch, circle to the punch, bicep to the ear, bring my arm out. The same premise you'd use for an underhook is the same thing you're doing for that collar tie. You're punching, circling to the punch, weaving your hand back inside, and that's that's hand fighting, right? Again, hand fighting is not just like clubbing away at a guy's head. Hand fighting is he has a collar tie on me. I'm going to fight my hands back inside. I'm going to fight my hands back inside. He's underhooking me. I'm going to fight my hands back inside. I mean, you that's, find, you find yourself, that's hand fighting. You find yourself teaching more clearing ties or more going out and getting ties? Uh, well, well, both, but, but I think – 
or kind of a point you just kind of asked what we're working on lately is that I want to, I'm, we're working on taking other people's ties mm -hmm. and not being, somebody has an under call me or an under, like a caller tie or under call me or 201. Like I don't need to go, Oh my gosh, they're, they're controlling me here. Right. I need to learn how to take their tie and turn it into my offense. So I just, I call that changing the tie, changing the tie and then bringing my offense to me. Mm -hmm. And these are just some examples I've given you an underhook, Right, I can sidestep, rip it down, double leg, two on one, sidestep, rip it down, single leg, collar tie, punch, circle the punch, weave my hand back inside, there's my high crotch, left collar tie, punch, weave my hand back inside, there's my single leg. Mm -hmm. So it's taking a guy's tie and turning it in to you know my offense. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. That's great, coach. Great stuff. What uh? What other things? Well, I was you know I was kind of thinking what what's exciting happening at Drexel and uh and uh, Penn right now with their programs. Is there anything exciting? What where are they at? Are they getting better? Well, I would say they're they're for sure you know getting better. Uh, again, I can't I can't talk tons about college. I can tell you all about the PRTC, right? Okay. Just as far as recruiting stuff. But what I will say is, from our perspective, what's really exciting is that. The guys they're going to train at those locations is that, you know, we have Ethan Lezak, who's a three-time All-American NCAA finalist. We have, um, you know, Joey McKenna, mm -hmm. who's a three-time All-American NCAA finalist. He's got second in the U.S. Open in December. We just added uh, Dave McFadden, who weighs about right now, he probably weighs a little over 180. And he had a really good win the other night against Tommy Gant and that UFC fight pass thing they had. Because Tommy Gant's been really kind of like a top three or top four guy. Nice. And so for Dave McFadden to come out and beat him, you know, handily, I think was, was exciting. So we added Dave McFadden to our group. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to start working with Mark Hall again. As you know, I had him with me for four summers at the Olympic Training Center. Mm -hmm. And so he graduates from Penn State in uh, December. So he's going to move here at the end of December and start with us full time in January. That's fun. And so he'll be an 86 kilo, right? He'll, he'll wrestle 189 pounds. So he's starting to, he's lifting with Kyle Snyder right now. They're on the same strength program. They lift together. Yeah. So his, his idea is to put some size on and he'll wrestle 86 kilo. Awesome. And then we, um, clearly, we, you know, it was great news uh, that Jordan Burroughs committed to come, come train with us, the PRTC too. So Jordan Burroughs will move here September next year and, and he's committed to training through 2024. That's awesome. So, I mean, with, with all those guys, um, it's exciting. And we also have one more guy, Ben Honus, who's an All-American for uh, Cornell. He was second in the U.S. Open in 97 kilo in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, he teched Ty Walls in the semifinals 12 to 2, who's all uh, – he was on the national team. And so Ben Ben moved to Philadelphia, and so we, we added him to our group too. So between Ben at 97 kilo, Mark will be 86 kilo, McFadden will be 79 kilo, Jordan Burroughs will be 74 kilo, um, Joey McKinnon will be 65 kilo and Ethan Lezak will be 61. I just feel like we have a really Sounds like a great environment. full stable of guys. And the, the great thing about these RTCs is that those are the senior level guys that are training right in the pen, pen wrestling room, pen and dressing wrestling rooms. Those are the guys, the whole idea that, that I love about this is that it's this trickle down leadership effect, right? You get the right college coaches, coach Rain at Penn, coach Azevedo at Drexel, the right RTC coach humbly, you know, myself, you get that leadership in place and then you recruit the right senior level guys, all the guys I just mentioned. Yeah. And that leadership from the top trickles down to the senior level guys. And then all of that trickles down to the college guys. Mm -hmm. Right. And then what's really cool. All of that's going to trickle down to the high school guys in the area that right. can come train with us as well. And those are beat the streets, Philly. You know, we, we work with a lot of beat the streets, Philly high school wrestlers, which we're really excited to continue to serve and help. And there's about a thousand inner city kids. Wow. in uh, Philadelphia that are wrestling now. Yeah. Amazing. So we get a chance to um, help them. And that's what's cool, I think, with, with Jordan Burroughs and Mark Hall, um, you know, coming to town. They're just going to be great role models for those guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sounds awesome. Big thing coming for those programs. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, anybody, I think I sent you the other day, anybody that has questions about, you know, getting to those schools, I would just have them fill out the, the questionnaires and, you know, reach out and get in contact with the coaches if they have any questions. Because all those coaches, you know, they'll answer all the specific questions on Penn mm -hmm. or Drexel. Um, for me, I can, I can answer all the questions about our Olympic Re Regional Training Center, but I just can't, you know, I can't. Yeah. 
I don't yeah. do stuff on the college side just because I'm not employed, you know, by the college. Right. Well, the coach, thank you so much for the time. It's really yeah. appreciated. We got a yeah. lot, lot to work on. So As you think about that stuff, I would say if you want to go back that PennsylvaniaRTC.org, click on media, and there's yeah. lots of technique on there. If you That's watch them cool. and you got a question for me, Brahma, just just text me, ping me, and I'll I'll help you as much as I can. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. All right. Appreciate the time. All right. Take care. Yeah, See you later. Day. See you.